Well, the summer may be slipping by all too quickly, but it sure delivered some hot weather. Lucky Andrew, he's holidaying on beautiful Lake of the Woods in northwestern Ontario. Not Chantel and Bruce, though. They've answered the call for a midsummer ad issue tonight. And there are a few things to talk about, so let's get at it. Chantel is in Montreal. Bruce is in Ottawa. Topic one, the Quebec election. Lots happening both on the trail and off the trail. You're in the heart of it all there, Chantel. How would you describe for the rest of Canada what's happening in that hmm. province right now? Well, I guess for the rest of Canada, the, the, the tradition is to watch a Quebec election as a match between federalist and sovereigntist. It looks like we're doing something very different this year. Uh, and I'm not sure that very many provinces have experienced experimented with what is happening here, a three-way race, not, not two main parties and some third player, but three parties, uh, the Liberals, Premier Jean Charest, uh, the Parti Québécois, Pauline Marois, but also this new party, Coalition Avenir Québec, with François Legault, a former PQ minister, all of them basically going head-to-head -head for becoming Premier. Uh, and that has been the event of the past week, that this third party is edged up uh, and really changed the nature of this debate. Is there a single issue? I mean, today, if you watch today, you've kind of got those two issues, the corruption issue that sits there hanging over the province and the student issue still very much alive. Are those the issues? Are those what's really at stake here? Both of those issues are going to play a large part in, in people's decision, but I would argue that the main issue, uh, and it is one that is familiar to people who don't live in this province, is change. Uh, the, the Liberals have been in power for uh, three mandates. The Parti Québécois would like to come back. People are used to this notion that if the Liberals are tired, you go to the Parti Québécois. They don't seem all that keen for going back to the Parti Québécois this year, so they have to decide whether they really want to sign up with a, a, a fourth-term government, something that's not happened in decades here, whether they want to go back to the PQ when there is no real appetite for referendum wars again, or whether they want to try something brand new with this uh, Coalition Avenir Québec party. Bruce, what's your take on it? Well, I actually think this is one of the most interesting provincial elections that we've seen in a while, and uh, I'm, I'm quite enjoying watching and quite enjoying reading what Chantal's been writing about it. Uh, I guess uh, the first thing that's obvious to me is that if Charest appeared to have no hope of winning about a year ago, he does have a significant hope of winning this election now. I also look at the whole question of fatigue and measure that against the idea of anger. I think that we've seen a number of provincial elections where clearly voters have been fatigued with incumbents who've been in office for a long period of time. And it looked as though they wanted change, but at the end of the day, people didn't opt for change because they weren't angry enough to really feel motivated for change or because they couldn't decide on what kind of change they wanted. And I think both of those scenarios could well play out in the province of Quebec, and really that, along with the economic proposition that the Premier has been uh, putting forward as his ballot question, is probably the best hope that he has of, of victory in this election. Well, your take on Shoray is interesting because, you know, you used to work with him. You know him fairly well. What is your sense of this first week on the, on the trail? He's always been known as a campaigner, a really good campaigner. Uh, is he showing that side of himself here in well, spite I, of I all think, that's happening? Well, I think he's actually been campaigning quite well. I think he came out of the gates with a great deal of energy. I think he talked almost immediately about his project for creating 250,000 jobs for Quebecers. I think it was a big, bold-sounding statement about an economic priority. And if I think about the other two parties, uh, you know, the PQ looks to me have lot to have lost its way. It doesn't seem to have an idea about what its proposition is for Quebecers in this election. And I think the Coalition Avenir Quebec wants to talk about corruption. I guess the question in my mind is that issue will uh, form a part of this campaign, but will at the end of the day it be the issue that uh, that decides the outcome. I'm not clear uh, that I'm convinced about that yet. Yeah, but careful. The Coalition Avenir Québec over the past week has not been scoring points strictly on corruption. It has been scoring points on making solid announcements, on recruiting someone that uh, you can agree or disagree with, but who sounds solid uh, uh, as a, a future health minister. Actually, uh, that party is put together, and that is how it had such a great first week. A team that is much stronger than any team uh, that has challenged either the PQ or the Liberals in four decades. So uh, if 
and I do agree that Jean Charest could prevail, but if he does, it's not because change will have lost. It's because change will have split between two parties in the same way that progressive voters split and Stephen Harper wins. Last quick word on this, and that's on polls. Uh, given <laughs> how we've been misled by polls, uh, not too long ago, obviously, in Alberta, should we be paying attention to any polls right now, Bruce? Uh, probably not as much as has already been uh, paid. I think it's uh, it's important to let this campaign have another week or two before you start to take the measure of how these uh, different parties are are landing their message. Obviously, we're in the summer months, which means that the polls are a little bit uh, shakier in terms of the reliability of the sample. So I, I think the short answer is no. All right. I want you to watch a clip. This different issue, pipelines, Northern Gateway. This is uh, Stephen Harper just the other day. Watch this. The only way that governments can handle a controversial projects of this uh, manner is to ensure that things are evaluated on an independent basis scientifically and not simply on political criteria. Um, and as I said repeatedly, the government does not pick and choose particular projects. The government obviously wants to see um, British Columbia's uh, export trade uh, continue to grow and diversify. That's important. But projects have to be evaluated on their own merits. What do we make of that, Chantal? <laughs> we make of that that uh, for all of Stephen Harper's constitutional capacity to force a pipeline through British Columbia, he has with uh, 20, 21 seats in British Columbia, uh, and, and uh, an official opposition leader, Thomas Mulcair, who is busy building a new coalition between Quebec and British Columbia. So uh, he is trying to position himself as, as a, a straight player in the debate over pipelines. It's going to be made a bit harder to sell uh, because of the government's uh, not-so-green credentials, frankly. Now, even coming out on the side of science there, some people would <laughs> find that interesting. Uh, there was an ad in the paper this week by Enbridge, the main company behind Northern Gateway, uh, pleading their case, uh, saying that, you know, they've got a good track record in spite of the spills that we've read so much about of late. Um, they handle that one right, Bruce? Well, I think they're making the case that they feel needs to be made. I think what's happening on the politics side of things, Peter, is that there's some chickens coming home to roost a little bit for the Conservatives. Because of the very aggressive posture that they've taken consistently about uh, environmental issues, uh, and this project being one in particular, uh, I think they created a situation where rather than building a case for a project that they felt that was important, they ended up looking like they were more focused on driving a political wedge. And I think uh, that's all well and good if everything's going well, but things don't always go well, and there's no room for error uh, when you take that kind of aggressive posture. Uh, the Enbridge project is clearly one of several important um, infrastructure projects that the country does need to evaluate, and I think do so coolly and rationally and using science and independent study. Uh, and so good, I guess, on the government that they're saying that this is the way that we should uh, we should look forward at these projects. And of course, they're not the only party that has taken a position that says, uh, damn the science, we, uh, we know what the outcome should be. The NDP has effectively taken that position too. Yeah, the problem is that uh, in British Columbia, at this point, the NDP's point of view is winning the day big time. There is a provincial election coming next May. At first, uh, it seemed like Stephen Harper was trying hard to ensure that the current government, the Liberals, stayed in power. At this point, the mood in British Columbia makes that unlikely, and they will likely have to work with a government that will campaign against this pipeline. Uh, that's going to be really hard. All right, last topic, Justin Trudeau. Look at this. This is his, <laughs> uh, this is his uh, Twitter feed. I find it interesting because he keeps changing the picture on his Twitter page uh, three times, in fact, today. Looks like he's trying to position himself, trying to have the right picture up there. He's got the like the calm guy. He doesn't have the uh, the goatee and everything he had a little while ago. Um, what's happening here? He's supposedly thinking about whether or not he should be running. Is this process dragging out too long for him, uh, Bruce? Well, I don't know. I think that the party has set a timetable for uh, the end of this campaign, which if they stick to means it's probably not in anybody's interest to get into this race too soon. Uh, because there's a risk that people will fatigue of it. You need to create some sort of drama around it. 
I think probably Justin Trudeau is wondering what many people are wondering, which is whether or not um, there really is a life ahead for this party. Uh, and if so, if he's the right person to lead it, I think the Liberals should hope that he runs, but they should probably hope that other credible candidates come forward as well. Uh, okay. And I think the most important decision that they have to make is whether or not they're going to present themselves as a, uh, as a better alternative to the Conservative Party or as a better alternative to the NDP. All Not right. an easy choice. All right. Last quick word on this to you, Chantal. I think uh, the so-called other credible candidates are waiting to see what Justin does. Uh, and I think many of them will not run if he is running because they don't think that they want to run as far valoir. I also, at this point, believe that he will run. And if I were facing a, what, eight-month campaign, I don't think I'd be in a hurry, especially not with the Quebec election on. All right. Leave it at that. Good to talk to you both. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Thanks. Bruce, Chantel, and Andrew will be back on a regular basis in September. But as always, if events call, we'll get them to the table anytime.